On this week's DAS tutorial, I'm going to be taking a moment to answer a question that I received a few days ago from a viewer that wanted to have two figures that were close to each other, but he wanted the distance to be exaggerated. So two figures that are relatively close together, but he wanted them to look further apart from the, uh, from the camera. Um, so we're going to do that today using a couple of more advanced camera controls. So if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And if you get something like uh, out of this, hit the like button as well. And leave me a comment um, if you have any tips or suggestions or if there's anything you want me to cover in a future video, be sure to leave me a comment and I will uh, look into doing that in the near future. Also, if you like any of the assets that I've used in this, uh, any of the figures or the clothing packs, I'm going to put links to those in the description below. And uh, if you follow my affiliate links, I'll get a small commission off of any purchases that you make, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So that is a great way to support my channel. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right in. So right now, I've got my scene set up with two figures, and I've got my camera, and I'm using an HDRI background. So these are all things that I have covered in other uh, videos, so be sure to check those out um, via the links on the screen. And let me switch back to texture shaded real quick and go to perspective view. And one more thing I've done is I've done my uh, uh, primitive as a lighting source which I've also covered in an earlier video. So be sure to check those out, but specifically you'll want to be kind of up on the camera controls and the depth of field. Um, so we're going to kind of be expanding on those controls a little bit. So let's start by going into our camera controls real quick. So I'm going to select our camera. So you can either, by the way, you can either select the camera in scene like that, just by clicking on it from perspective view or from another camera view. Or you can also go down to the camera tab and select it this way. I've only got one camera in the scene right now, but as long as we get our camera selected, uh, however you do that is what we need to do right now. Then we're going to go to the camera heading on the menu there. And the uh, so I did a video before on the focal distance and f-stop. That's my depth of field video. On this one, we're going to be talking about the frame width and focal length. So I'm going to try to explain these as best I can. But if you have a background in photography, this is going to be uh, a lot easier for you to understand. But the frame width is essentially the size of your camera sensor. So most uh, decent digital cameras today are based on a 35 millimeter camera sensor. Um, there are some medium format cameras that are a lot more expensive uh, that use a 60 millimeter, uh, 60 millimeter sensor. Um, but we'll get into more into how that affects our um, um, our DAS renders in a moment. Uh, but for now, just understand that that's the size of your sensor, basically how much light it lets in, the detail of the photograph, some other things like that. Um, the focal length is going to be the size of your lens. So the default on this is 65, which is actually uh, kind of high. Uh, my standard lens that I use on my camera is a 50 millimeter, and then I've got some other specialized lenses. Um, anything that is uh, a higher number is going to be more of a zoom lens, and anything that's a lower number is going to be a wide angle lens. Uh, so wide angle lenses have a wider field of view, meaning you can actually see more of the frame. And again, we're going to see how that affects our uh, renders in just a moment. But if you use a higher number focal length, uh, then it's going to narrow your field of view and it's going to make everything appear closer to the camera, even if it isn't necessarily. So that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to make these figures appear closer or further away from the camera and by extension closer and further away from each other by adjusting our frame width and focal length. So let's go ahead and see what these look like. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my camera view. And so like I said, if you increase the focal length, it's going to make them appear closer to the camera. It's going to look like they're zooming in and it's also going to make them look like they're closer to each other. So I'm just going to start bumping that up step at a time. And now you can start to see how that works. My camera is still sitting in the same place, but it's making everything appear closer. There we go. All right, so let's go back to the camera view real quick. Um, oops, I accidentally did bottom view. There we go, camera view. And I'm going to set that back at the default, which was 60, oops, not 650, but 65 millimeters. Oh, wrong one. I was doing focal distance. Uh, there we go, focal length. That's what we want, not focal distance. 
All right, now I'm going to start going the other direction, and this is the effect that uh, that um, that the person asking the question was looking for. So we wanted them to appear further apart from one another. So now I'm going to start bumping this number down. So now it looks like the camera is getting further away, but really what's happening is I'm just increasing the field of view of the camera, which makes everything look further away. And so now if I physically move the camera closer, and I'm just going to, you can do this by, if you have a uh, scroll wheel on your mouse, just move the scroll wheel down in order to zoom in, or to move the camera closer rather. There we go. So now I haven't changed anything about the distance between these two characters, but it appears that they're further apart. Um, so there are a couple of other things that happen. If you use a really extreme uh, focal length, like if I bump it down much further than this, you start to get kind of a fisheye effect um, where the, uh, the, uh, and some lens distortion. So I'm going to bump that way down. And so now things are starting to distort and look a little bit strange. So I think I had that at about 28, and that seems like a pretty good range. Um, you can also get a similar effect by adjusting the frame width. I would use this more to kind of adjust the lens distortion. There we go. So if it's starting to distort a little bit, just bump that down a little, and you should be able to flat that flatten that image out a little while still retaining that kind of that, that depth look. There we go, I'm going to put that up just a little more and zoom in. There we go, there we go. All right, and I've already done a test render on our original image, so we'll be able to do an A-B comparison. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the render button on this one, and we'll uh, take a look at it and see what it looks like. All right, so here I am now with my two finished images. This is the before image with the, the standard 65 millimeter focal length applied, and then this is my after image with the smaller focal length. So a couple of things happen here. First of all, you can notice that the distance between them is more pronounced. My, my uh, back figure looks a lot further back than she was before. Also, I'm getting more of the background in frame, more of the picture in general. If I flip back and forth, you can tell that very, very well, because again, all I'm doing is using a wider field of view, so you get more in the camera. So a couple of other accidents that happen is that it now appears that my front figure is looking past the camera where she was looking more at the camera in the first one. So I might, uh, if I were going to use this render, I might go back and adjust her pose a little bit or maybe adjust the angle of the camera so that they're both looking at the camera. Um, I also might adjust the shadows a little bit because they don't quite fit in with the background. These shadows look really sharp, whereas these shadows in the background are a little bit less sharp. So I may cover that in a future video. I may do something more about shadows and how to get different shadow effects. But for the purposes of this video, I am pretty happy with this one for right now. So as I said before, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And check out my affiliate links below. And that will do us for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.